All right, guys, it's Paul Singh with BullsOnWallStreet.com. Weekly Swing Trade Report for November 7, 2021. Those of you who follow the weekly swings or are members of the Swing Report know we've been talking about that September-October seasonality. Historically, one of the worst periods to trade, and we saw that this September-October until the, about the end of the October, then we had the nice run here. So the market has played according to historic patterns. We saw that last September and October as well. Look at last September, October, we had that end of October run, had the pullback, and then after November, it, the market just flew. And that goes in line with the upcoming seasonality as well, which is the year-end run. Now, it doesn't happen every year. You can go back to 2018 when we actually had a big decline in November, December. So this isn't foolproof, but the historic trend is it's a good time to enter positions going into end of the year markups. And we'll talk more about this maybe in the coming weeks because it doesn't just automatically mean buy right at the start of November. Obviously, we have to use technical analysis, see where the good entry spots are right now probably not the best time to be entering a lot of positions unless you like really like something or like a few things but i wouldn't get too aggressive right now because the market is very extended you can see here we have had this slow float higher almost every day has been green on spy to a couple of red days here but nothing really significant um, and what i always like to do when the market looks like it's starting to get extended compare how it relates to historic pullbacks related to the 50-day moving average. So when you start to see this gap form between a widening gap between the 50-day moving average and the indexes, that's usually a spot where we're going to get some pullback. And that would be very healthy. That's what we're waiting for. We want to see a pullback that will help us enter positions at good level, technical levels. And if we look back here, look at some of the big runs. Here's an example here where we started to see that big gap between the moving average and Price action, and then we got the pullback. Uh, you know, and then we got the pullback here. And, and here, you start to see this big gap here. We saw the pullback. Almost all of these pullbacks weren't just when the market was just, you know, kind of going okay. It's usually when the market was extended, and that's where we are right now. So we would love to see a pullback. Maybe it doesn't happen, and then we get caught with less positions. We are still trading through this, but my point is don't get super aggressive. <clears throat> all right. So that's a market trend. If we look at the Qs, and if we look at IWM, you're seeing pretty much the same thing. And look at how extended IWM is. Now, IWM was lagging for a while. And basically, 2021 has been in this range. But we finally got that breakout. So small caps also doing very well. Uh, market breadth has been strong. So again, if we go to SPY, let's look at market, some market breadth indicators now. If we look at SPY here, again, SPY, 500 of supposedly the biggest and best stocks but not equally weighted. Apple is weighted the most, worth over 3%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if spy, if you were to take the 500 stocks, each one would be worth only 0.2, but Apple is worth 3%. You can see all the different stocks here, EXPE, P Pfizer, RCL, down the line. They're not all worth the same. So if you take the top 10 holdings, they're worth about 25 to 30% of SPY. So we always like to look at RSP, which is equally weighted. So now if we look at this thing, uh, when we look at RSP, Apple is not worth any more than EXPE or Pfizer or RCL or CCL and going down the list. They're all worth exactly the same. This gives us a better idea of the broader, uh, if not market, at least S&P 500. And if we see here, one thing we notice is maybe it's not quite as extended as SPY is, which means it's lagging a little bit. So that lag here is telling us maybe it's a more concentrated part of the market that's really extended. Nothing in the market's really bad right now, so nothing too concerning, but maybe a subtle little sign that there might be a healthy pullback. This is nothing to be concerned about. Sometimes we look at the market breadth and get worried. This is not that, but maybe this is signaling that there could be a pullback, which we want. And then if we look at VIX as well, this was really interesting on Friday that the market was still doing that slow float climb, the little wall of worry climb, and VIX actually popped on Friday. That doesn't always happen. Usually, you know, the market's going up, VIX is going down. 
Um, but here, VIX, VIX was up six, almost 7% here. And you can see that little pop here. So maybe, maybe not too concerning right now for the market, but it is interesting that on a day the market was up, maybe a little fear in the index. And that fear might be the market's getting a little extended. We have to be more cautious here. So a couple of things to pay attention to with market breadth. But again, this isn't something that we're saying the market's going to tank or anything like that. Maybe, but maybe we get a healthy pullback back to the 9 EMA or back to this old high. And that would really set us up for the end of the year. All right. Now let's look at big tech earnings. Big tech's out of the way. Big tech will say the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, and then we throw in Tesla, Nvidia, AMD, and some of these other big tech stocks here. Let's start with the Fang. So, let's go to Facebook. We are actually in. We actually took profits in Facebook on Friday, playing this moving average sandwich. Uh, you know, very extended, kind of a rubber band setup. But Facebook has actually done very well post earnings, and it was getting crushed before that with all the negative news, which Facebook always seems to be in the face of. And you look at any of Facebook's trends, it's always in a bigger uptrend, but always very volatile. And it gets these kind of deep, scary pullbacks. And we got one here. Now we remounted the 200 day moving average, hit the 50 day. This is where we took profits here last week. Now we're waiting to see, does it cross a remount the 50 day moving average? Uh, wouldn't exactly get it back on trend because the moving average is pointed down, but it would be a healthy sign for Facebook. So I would say right now, nothing to do with Facebook, but keep an eye out on that potential remount. All right, let's go to Amazon and Apple. Here's Amazon. Amazon has been lagging some of the other FANG stocks. This pattern looks very similar to IWM's pattern. Um, so I would watch for a break of this old high or a remount of this old high where we're getting to. Now there is this little failed, there was a failed, uh, kind of break out here. Um, I'm going to ignore that and go with the old high. If it could break that level, I think that's a good entry uh, for Amazon. Apple, I think, is in a good spot right now. This is another one that had uh, had a deep pullback, remounted the 50-day moving average, um, and now looks ready, set up to at least challenge highs post earnings. So all these things have actually done really good post earnings. And if we look at Google here, as well, and this is also a good sign for the market that all of these important stocks have, even if their initial earnings reaction wasn't great, they've recovered and post earnings are doing really well. So here's Google, uh, looks very strong here, a little extended, but I would definitely wa be watching this for potential setups. And Netflix has just been gangbusters before earnings, post earnings. We've been very cautious here because it was getting extended and the last two days we got deep pullbacks. No surprise here. This is going to set us up for a good entry. So what we're looking at here is look at the range, the, the price action ranges and the moving average. Here's a really strong potential support level in here. So if Netflix starts to fall in here and show some strength, which would also be corresponding with this 50 rising 50 day moving average, that would be a good spot for a potential entry. So we're watching that very closely if Netflix can do that. I wouldn't just blindly buy. If it gets down here to 635, we want to see some strength in, in it to show it's ready to then become a trend pullback play. So that's Netflix. And then look at Tesla here. Uh, Tesla is looking very much like Netflix was just a few days ago. And we'll see if Tesla gets that pullback. And maybe uh, I would love for it to fill this open gap here, which corresponds with its old high uh, that would set us up for an entry there. It'd have to pull back quite a bit for that to happen, but it could happen very quickly. You see how some of the pullbacks in Tesla happened very quickly. So we'll be watching Tesla for that as well. I believe NVIDIA still has to uh, 1117 for earnings, so nothing really to do with that one now. Uh, AMD already had earnings and has also been very strong and we'll look for a potential uh, pullback play there. All right, that's big tech. Now let's look at some recent trades. Uh, we are in SE right now and looking for the uh, breakout here. I think we're up uh, a little bit on this one. And then uh, we recently took profits in apps and we'll go over a losing trade as well, but we took profits in apps. Good thing we did because it did pull back hard here uh, after it hit our target. Uh, we recently we were just talking about Facebook. We had played it on the remount of the 200 day moving average, took the profit. We call this a moving average sandwich, took the profit at the 50 day. And again, are looking for another potential entry in uh, Facebook. 
Uh, we were hot on electric, and we know Tesla was flying, but a lot of the electric-related stuff was flying. Plug, electric components, obviously very important. We actually played this one pre... Usually we wait for the remounts, but this industry and sector was so strong. We had a lot of good volume coming in that we also actually anticipated this one, played it pre remount of the 200 day moving average and then took profits uh, right around 40. And now it's starting to pull back testing the 90 MA, but I'm definitely still watching this stock and potentially uh, a big continuation pattern in play here. And it has actually has earnings uh, tomorrow. Okay. So those were, those were a few of the recent wins. Uh, we had a little bit of a frustrating, frustrating loss here and only frustrating because it actually is now doing what we thought it was going to do, but we got stopped out here and, and we, we, uh, I can't remember where my entry was here. I think it was on a rebound of the 90 MA or the, no, the 50, 50 day moving average, uh, hit our st stop level or got close to the stop level actually thought about holding on but decided didn't want to increase our risk. And then you can see it has popped recently and has earnings all 11.23. Uh, so even though this was a loss, uh, a standard one hour loss, you know, hit our stop level, but I still really like this stock going into earnings. We've been playing a lot of earnings pushes where if there's a really nice pattern, a couple of weeks before earnings, we like to get in and there's often a little earnings push. Plug had done that, the one I just showed you. Uh, but so here, um, it actually looks good above the 50 day moving average and maybe it gets that earnings push to the top of the range uh, by the 23rd. So I still do like this one, even though we got stopped out. All right, guys, that's the weekly swing report. Remember, you can become a swing member. Uh, just go to bullsonwallstreet.com under the part time trading or swing uh, tab. All right, guys, till next week.